what you're about to witness was filmed partially before a live studio audience. Basically, I didn't want to film the whole video again, so I just picked one out from a couple years ago that I recorded. So, um, yeah. There'll be some laughter in the background. It's not laugh tracks. It's actual people laughing. That's something I said. Not just that me. All right. Have a great night. Ms. Dow, but counting nonetheless. Not enumerating one, two, three, Hello. but find its own amount. Now, why is it talking when I talk? You shut up. Hey, here we go. Now, um, so here's the game. A true story, 1988, yes, I suppose. I was senior in high school. Had to go to the prom, was on court. Was not pleased. Was not happy to be going. So, could not find a girl suitable to go with. <laughs> Small school, not a lot of a lot to choose from. Is that a nice way of saying it? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Now, one school? girl I knew from another school, I asked her, their prom was the same night. She's like, uh, I want to go to mine. I said, okay, that's fine. That would be the number one pick. So then, well, then all my friends are trying to help me. What about her? Are you kidding me? What about her? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Finally, they're like, what about Karen? And I said, oh, what about her? She got a boyfriend. No, they broke up. Good news. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> no, she's got her dress. Everything's all ready to go. I said, okay. So I go to find her. Oh, that's right. She was big into. She had a big. She had a bunch of cows. I had hogs. She had a bunch of cows. She was off at a livestock show all week long. Now this is before the interwebs, before cell phones. She's gonna be back on Friday. The dance is Saturday. She comes back Friday. So it's, I remember this like it was yesterday. By the way, it was sixth period. Like, cause I waited till the last minute, right? My friends are like, "Have you asked her yet?" I'm like, "No, I'm going to." So I go out there, walk out there. I see her. I'm like, "Hey, Karen, how's it going? How was the, how was the thing?" Said, Never mind about that. Who are you taking to prom? You, I guess. And she's like, "All right, that was it." No. <laughs> so we so we go to prom. So we go. So we go to the. We show up at dinner, and this is the part that matters. We're sitting there. Here we are, in the booth. I'm slouching as I always do. Here she is. She had kind of curly hair, but you can just imagine. Whatever. Now, the waitress kept coming by. Can I take your order? I had a mullet back then, so I'm going to draw that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I don't. I will find some if I can find too. Now, <laughs> now, the waitress came by after like 20 minutes. Can I take your order? She goes, I, I need some more time. Okay. So we're talking, and then like 20 more minutes passes. Can we take the order now? I still need some more time. I kid you not, we sat there for almost an hour before she finally decided what she wanted to eat. And that was the first time that this stuff started coming into my mind, like, why is this so, why is it taking her so long? And in my mind, I, did, I would have pulled out a pen and doodled on a napkin, and I know it would have been a little rude, but I'd done it if I, if I had had a pen, but I didn't have a pen. But in my mind, I'm doing some of the math in my head. And as I recall, there were 15 entrees. Now, right off the bat, that's 15 choices, Mr. Graham, because I'm only going to order one entree. It's a fancy restaurant. It's not like you're going to have, like, I want a number five and a number seven. Or, you know, it's just one. Now, of course, you had a super salad choice, but I'm just going to say she goes salad. All right. So there's probably 12 salad dressings to choose from. And then, of course, you got a potato choices. How many choices for potato do we have? Three, four. Three, four. Baked. Oh, well, we got baked. We got French fries, we got a little mashed, scallops, got a who knows. Now, now, by the way, next time you go to a nice restaurant, you start doing the math in your head here. Okay, now, uh, potato choices. Oh, bread product. You always get a bread. You got like a biscuit, sir, would you like a croissant? Or would you like sourdough? What have you? Three? Three, four? Psh. Of course, you have to have drinks. Now, we were in high school, so soft drink's pretty much all you got, right? But, you know, you could add coffee, tea, you could add... If we, I, by the way, I'm convinced if we'd had the wine list that was almost 30 years ago, we'd still be sitting there. <laughs> I'm convinced of this. Now, but maybe 10 soft drink choices? I don't know. Whatever. How many total possible different dinner combos is that? <laughs> How did you get that number, Bryce? How, why would you do that, Bryce? Well, Bryce? Because you have 15 choices with the 
entree. Because you're going to have an entree and, and a salad and dressing. And, and, and. Can you stop talking? Shh. Thank you. Anywho, as I was saying, it's because it's an and between each one of those things. It's not like you're going to have this or that. I don't want to I want to pay for the whole entree, but I just want the salad. That's just weird. Okay? So, clearly, this is what you're getting. Okay? That is a lot. Now, why did it take her so long? Because she was looking at each one as if they were viable, I'm quite sure. Let's see, if I have the steak with the scallop <laughs> potatoes and, and the sourdough and the Mountain Dew and the French dressing, no, let's compare that to the exact same thing with Italian. It would take a while. Now, why did it take me less than 10 minutes to decide? I'll tell you why. Because these, there might have been three entrees that maybe were interesting to me. Growing up on a farm, I do not order pork out. Not going to happen. Will not happen because they always screw it up. I will not order a steak out. If I want a steak, I'll go and go out of the freezer and make my own. Thank you very much. Okay? So, nice chicken maybe? Sure. Lasagna? That's my sweet spot. Okay? Yes. There's maybe three things on there that make me happy. The rest of them ain't going to happen. Sorry. Now, back then, I was a Thousand Island man. So, in essence, I had one choice. It was Thousand Island. Then I went through my ranch phase. I like a vinaigrette now. I'm kind of into a French phase, right? a Rus Russian phase right now, I should say. But, but whatever. There was one. That's all I would have ordered back then. There was no thought about it. That's what I want. So, what about potatoes? Uh, maybe two choices, really, for me. Maybe I go baked or mashed with a, with a fancy dinner. I don't know. Maybe. But maybe two choices for potatoes. You know, that's all I'm interested in. Mr. Graham, what about bread? Ooh, yeah, say. I will not order a biscuit out because I make very good biscuits. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sourdough. I hate croissants. So maybe one. Maybe I have one choice for bread. Okay, of those three that I listed, I'd, I'd probably go sourdough. Probably. And back then, I was a Mountain Dew man. So Mr. Groom had a whopping six choices for dinner. This is why it took me less than ten minutes to decide what that. Okay? Because there's really no thought process to this at all. What this is called is what is referred to as the first counting principle. Okay? That idea that... On each time you have to make a decision, so the first, or sometimes referred to as the fundamental, counting principle, it just states this, at each decision, you multiply the number of options for that decision. So in the case of this, I need to order an entree, 15. Next decision, salad, 8. Bread product, 2. Potato, 2. Soft drink, one, whatever. And I just multiply them out. That's all there is to it. That's it. Mr. Graham, does that work for everything? Literally everything. I know. I know. Let's. Hallie says, Mr. Graham, I'm so excited when I get married. I can already tell in my head. I know I'm going to have six children. Good for you. Good for you. Mr. Graham, Mr. Graham, how many different possible combinations could there be? Well, I feel like there's two. The first one. And then there's two. And 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 there's two. Yay. One, two, three, five, six. Hey, Mr. Graham, that's 64 different possible outcomes, huh? That's correct. They're not all coming out. God, you know what? When I said 64, she went, oh, look, they, there's six total children. I know that. But the boy, girl, boy, girl thing, whatever. Okay? Like she cringed when I said 64. Okay. Here. Does four make, does two make, does four make you feel better? That would be 16. Are you with me? Or two. Or two. There's, there's four. Okay. But the point is, this is how the game is played. The fundamental counting principle. Easy money. It is. You're not wrong. Wait. So let's, let's pick on Ivy for a minute. How many pairs of shoes do you own, dear? Do you think? Just rough estimate. 
Ten pairs of shoes. Excellent. And how many shirts do you think you own, dear? Let's go with let's wait. Let's go with let's go with where to school clothes with pants. So let's 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 leave out our fancy stuff. We'd only wear with a skirt and so forth. Just just pick a number. It's your choice. I don't care. You can play along at home for your own amusement. Yes. Fifteen. Okay. And how many pairs of britches do you own, suitable to wear to school? Not, the, not some of that racy stuff, maybe. I mean, just you're suitable for clothes for school routine. Five. Five. Mr. Graham, you didn't include underwear. I know, and I'm not going to. No, I don't. If you're okay with that, I'm okay with that. Because that's, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Graham, I feel like that is 750 possible outcomes of outfits that she could wear. Is it though? No. I, Mr. Graham, I would never wear the polka dotted Nikes that I have. I would never wear them with the, with the orange touch pants that I have. That's a you problem. But there's still 750 possible outfits. Now, Mr. Graham, what about your closet, Mr. Graham? This is a fact. I have gotten dressed in the dark so many times in my life. Just reach in and grab something, throw it on, reach in and grab something, pull it on, and leave. And when I come home at the end of the day, I've gotten this routine. You wore that to school. <laughs> yeah? Uh, here's the thing. Most of my pants and shirts all more or less match. More or less. Some of them are, uh, but they all pretty much match. Does it matter what pants you wear, Jay? Not really. I just put them on and go. Okay. So for me, that's not a problem. For some of you, you realize there's that one pair of pants that you can only wear two different shirts, yes? So you can wear all of this stuff over here, or sounds like what? Plus these guys over here. Am I right? Now, if you were really bored today, you couldn't go home and do that. Don't do that. This is just how it's set up. Okay. Now, okay. Now, that is the fundamental counting principle. However, there are times when we have to do more than that. So, picture, if you will, a giant ex-football player, rookie teacher, who didn't get a job his first year out, so he did some subbing. And they called him and said, hey, would you like to teach kindergarten? I said, not really. And my wife says, we need money. You should go do it. And I said, okay. So I show up, and I get these little herd of children. <laughs> so it was brutal, dude. It was literally brutal. I've done it many times. Whatever. Here they are. Anyways. All right, children, uh, we're going to talk about the weather today. Sit so over here. I'm supposed to like, read you about the weather. You're doing it wrong. That's not how Mrs. So-and-so does it. Great. So that was the first thing that happened. The second thing that happened was this. Okay, we're going to go out to recess now. Hey, uh, George here, up in line here. It's not George's turn to be the line. Oh, for God's sakes. Because they care about order. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Now, when they line up at the door, door. When they line up at the door, if there was eight of these little devils, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> how many choices do you have for the line leader? That's correct. Now, he's gone. George has been selected or what have you. How many choices for the second one? And then, of course, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now, what operation should I put in between them? Plus or times? Why? Multiplication. Do you need a first place guy and a second place guy? Uh -huh. yeah. I feel like you do. So there is a multiplication betwixt them. Now, this thing has a name. It is called 8 factorial, which the exclamation point means. 8 factorial is how you say it. Now, if you have your Google Sheets, whip it out really fast. And in Google, it is done thusly. It's equals fact parentheses eight. Fact eight, period, done. <coughs> okay, did you find it? That's how you type it in. And it will do eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, done, period. Did it work, did it work, did it work? Did it work? Did it work? What'd you get? 40,320. Scream, that's a lot of different ways for the little chillings to line up the door. And of course, again, it matters to them. 
If you put Susie in front when it's supposed to be George's turn, he, she is upset. This is not bueno. Okay? It really matters to these little people. Okay? That's not the only people that matters to. Oh, by the way, at the end of the day, toward the end of the day, it was story time. <laughs> I don't remember what the book was. But I remember this one little gal wanted to sit on my lap. She sat on my edge of my knee right there. I'm like, whatever. She kind of more leaned against it, but kind of sat on it, whatever. When she got up, guess what? Oh, yeah, uh-huh. Oh, no. Yeah, I had a wet spot on my knee. It was awesome. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> Good news was it was about 2 in the afternoon, so what are you going to do? Anyway, but yes, yes. So yeah, I was not pleased. Okay, But 40,320, you got it? Yes? By the way, factorials get out of hand in a hurry. Check it out. What if you ask for like 16 factorial or 30 factorial? These things get out of hand in a giant hurry. They start off kind of puny and then they just get nuts. Right? What do you get? 30 factorial is what? 2.65 times 10 to the 32nd. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Mr. Grunk, we have a different line leader every second of the day we're in your room ever. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and we will still have seconds left over. Yes. Yes, it's, it's crazy, okay? So we will be using that. Again, the idea here is this. I have N objects, and I am taking all of them. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, I have to talk to you. And, listen carefully, this is huge. Order matters. Order is important to us, I have them, but... How are, how are you? I'm all right. Have a nice day. You're only all right? Yeah. I'll live. You're better. Thanks, man. All right. Order matters. I'm taking all of them. Mr. Grimm, but Mr. Grimm, what if I wasn't taking all of the children? Two or three of these little devils have been mean, awful, terrible children. Okay. Or I say something like this. Hey, first kids to the door get to go to recess. The rest of you losers have to stay. So what if I have 10 kids, and I am taking, uh, taking I'm going to take six of them with me somewhere. I'm taking six of them. Yeah, but again, they're little children, so cares. apparently order matters to them. It's kind of a big deal. If this happens, how many ways do I have to choose the first kid? How many ways do I have to choose the first kid? I'm going to pull names out of a hat, or I'm going to have them race somewhere. 10. And then, six, there it is right there. Oh, I'm just taking six of them with me to go do something. I'm leaving the other four losers here. They can't come. Last time I took all ten of them, yes? This time I'm only taking six of them. Again, I'm going with the little children because apparently order matters to these little beggars. Huh? So, Mr. Graham, what if I, how will I know on a problem in the book, how will I know if order matters? Ask yourself. Does it bother you if you came in second place in this deal? <laughs> then it's probably one of these guys. Are there times when, as grown ups or nearly grown ups, it doesn't matter what, n what order your name was called out? I just need you guys to come here and talk to me for a minute. I mean, like, Riley's pissed off. You didn't call me first. I'm so angry at you. Just wanted you to come over here and tell you something, but okay, weirdo. There are times when order matters, and there are times when order does not matter. Yes, in our lives? Yeah, sometimes it does. At the Olympics, it kind of does. In T-ball, eh, not so much. Not so much. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, there's got to be an easier way to figure this problem out than just times in it out, yes? Well, there is. It turns out this idea that I have n things or n objects or whatever you want to call it, and I am taking, this is important, r of them and order matters. Oops. Ah! This is called a permutation. R is how many I'm taking. So in this case, I have 10 kids, and I'm taking six of them. The R is six. Okay? 
That's just what that means. Mr. Grimm, can you tell us what the formula looks like? I'd love to. We write it like this. N, P, R. That's just how it's written. Sometimes written like this. Um, some different books write it different ways. Whatever. We typically write it this way. It's equal to N factorial over N minus R factorial. So in our, bless you, in our case, it's, bless you, 10 factorial over 10 minus 6 factorial. Now, before calculators were a thing, Mr. Cream, how did you have to do it back in the dark ages? We would write these out. And then we would divide by 4 factorial, which is, wait for it. And then, oh my gosh, they cancel off. They do. But you still have to type it out the hard way by hand. Yes, you did. Okay. Now, is there a button on my calculator for that? In fact, there is. So on your giggle sheets, it's equals per mute. And it's n comma r is what you're going to put in. So 10 comma 6. <coughs> no. You figure I'd do it on yours? You good? No, no, it's totally fine. It's so it's, uh, you should just do 10 and then where does the button at? The probability button. Right there. Probability and do the R. And then it's it. Yep. Okay. Did you get it? It's a big number. What is it? Um, 15,000? No. 151,000. Oh, it's close. Oh, I was close, Mr. Groom. I had the right number. Let's start, sort of, kind of, maybe-ish. Okay. All right. Mr. Groom, wait, here's a question. This is a question that blows my mind every time I ask it. <laughs> I quit using it on a test because so many people miss it because they're idiots. Okay. In a NASCAR race, here's the question. I don't even know what a NASCAR race is. It's cars. It doesn't matter. It's a race. Have you never seen a race of any kind ever? 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 I've seen a turtle race before. Okay, then picture 40 turtles with fancy paint jobs. Okay, here's the deal. There are 40 <laughs> cars in a race. All right, so here's my question. How many ways... Could it be horses? I suppose. Can the first five places be filled, or whatever you want to call it, right? Well, does order matter in a race? Yes. I feel like it does. So this would be a permutation. So when these NPR jobs, 40, P, 5, or in your calculator, on your, your uh, giggle sheets, permute. 40 comma 5. This is the total number of outcomes to finish the top five places in the race. Now, do it. What do you get? It's a big number. It's a rather large, huge number. Cool. It is. No, no, that's right. That's the right number. What do you get? Uh, 78 million. Can you just read the numbers to me? 7, 8. Uh, 9, 6, 0, 9, 6, 0. Like that. Is that what you got? All right, excellent. This is the total possible ways that it could happen. Total possible number of ways. Now, are, listen carefully. This is huge. Oh, my God, I cannot stress this to you enough. Are they all equally likely to happen? No. No. Now look at that. I'm going to go on a limb and say you probably don't watch a lot of NASCAR. No, no. This one guy goes, I don't know anything about cars. You've never seen a race. Well, I go, so that, that, that Usain Bolt character, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Okay, in a race, there's usually someone who is the favorite to win. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And then there's someone you go out there and you're like, why are you even out there? Am I right? 
There are quite a few of these outcomes where the, why are you even out there, is the winner. You with me? That is not likely to happen. Okay? Like Danica Patrick, you know, she goes out there every week. She does not win. She doesn't compete very well. Whatever. That's fine. Could she win? Yes! Based on her performance the last five years or whatever, is she going to? No. No. But it could happen. Mr. Grimm, Jimmy Johnson, it, he wins a lot. Is he probably, anytime he's up toward the front, that's fairly probably likely. Probably. Probably. All right. So they are not equally likely. There's just that many possible combinations of them. Yes? Yes, there you go. Again, Usain Bolt, the favorite horse in the Kentucky Derby, any of these things. The favorite horse in the Kentucky Derby pulls out, breaks his leg on the way out the door. That is sad. It's unlikely. But it could happen. There you go. But the favorite, but yeah, it could happen. So I'm saying the favorite's probably going to be in one of these... It, it's a favorite for a reason. So anyone's with a favorite up toward the front, it's very likely to happen. But the favorite coming in dead last, it's not very likely to happen. Dead last. It could, but it's not likely. Now, suppose you were like, we were like Scapoose. Did you know in Scapoose you vote for ASB officers like this? I want to run for ASB officer. Well, which one? No, I'm going to run for officer. Wait, what? Yeah, exactly. That's what happened. That's what Bo told me a couple years ago. Or last two years ago, I guess. He goes, I goes, I'm going to run for ASP office. I'm like, which one? He's like, why don't we just all run for office? And then the top vote getter is president. Well, what? Yes. What? It's weird. I know. So wait, if eight kids run and there's five offices, all right, permutation, does it matter what order you... Yeah, I kind of think it does. I wouldn't want to be secretary. No one else would want me to be secretary either. That's gross. Now, I was, I was public relations director, if you could imagine that. Uh, <laughs> equals permute. Eight comma five. So that's going to be eight times seven times six, which is... I don't know. I can't do math in my head. 400 something? 400 something? Eight times seven. Oh, 336. That's right. I can't do math. That's okay. I don't need to. There it is. So there are 336 different possible five officer combinations. There are a lot of them where my son Bo would have been the secretary, where he would have been the president, where he would have been vice president, would have been whatever. Okay? There's a lot of those because he would have been, you know, monkeyed around there. There would have been a bunch of them where he wasn't on the top five. Yes? In theory. In fact, he won, so he's president, but whatever. But it could have been any number of those possible combinations across there. But Can you enter it like that in Excel? In Excel, it's exactly the same thing. Exactly the same. Yes? In the calculator, it's not what you showed me right here, because when I did that, I got like 6,000. Yeah, 6,720. Yeah. 6,720. <laughs> Oh, wait, someone tell you that. You told me the answer. It's because I multiplied oh. them individually after. Oh. Okay. Eight times seven. Okay, let's do the math out. Let's do the math all the way out, shall we? <laughs> Mr. Krum will do it right. This. Mr. Krum, if I were to do it out, okay, we're, so it'd be eight. Oh, I know what I did wrong. There we go. So listen, it's 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over, now what is 8 minus 5, friends? 3, three factorial is this guy right here. So Mr. Graham did the math improperly in his head. I only did 8 times 7 times 6. I, what is it, that would have been the idea that I was only taking 3 officers, not 5, yes? Sometimes the old brain doesn't work properly. Anyway, that right there is, what number did you say it was, dear? What would you say was that big number you had a minute ago? 6,720. 6,720? Yeah. Okay, that is the right answer. I'm sorry. I, what I said, this, this is the right answer. This is the right answer done out the long way. Good. Excellent. That's nice. Okay, good. I didn't break anything. Now, as you well know, sometimes it just doesn't matter what order you select things. Yes? Sometimes order doesn't matter. Now, for this part, I want you to 
play with a friend next to you, and I want you, I want you to get some dissimilar objects so that you cannot confuse them. For instance, a highlighter and a big pen. Two objects. Watch me walk up to them and go, you know, I don't like either, either one of you. How many ways can you do that? Here, watch me do it again. You both suck. <laughs> There's only one way to do that. So there was two objects. Let's see this. Two objects, and I chose how many of them? Zero. I chose none of them. There's one way to do that. Now, Mr. Graham, I want to choose one of them this time. Okay, well, I could choose this one. What's the word? Or this one. That's right. So two, two objects, and I'm going to choose one of them. There are two ways to make that happen. Now, Mr. Graham, couldn't you also take both of them? I feel like I could. Watch. <laughs> how many ways could I? I already did none of them. Oh, yeah. Pay attention. Now, how many ways can I take both of them? Sorry, one. One. one way. So two objects. Choose two of them. There is one way to pull that off. This is what I would like you to do with your friend. I'd like you to repeat the same idea for three objects. And for four objects. And for five objects. So lipstick case, chapstick, Carmax, different color pens, cell phones, what have you. And talk about it amongst yourselves. Listen, for five objects, there should be, wait for it, I could do zero of them. One, two, three, four, or all five of them, yes? So for five objects, there'd be six different things you could do. And for four, there'd be five different things you could do. Try that. Work with somebody. Well, Paul, you have gotten quite a ways on it. Let's see what we get here. Now, it's interesting because I saw over here, someone mentioned, Mr. Robinson over here says, um, so for two objects, I could kind of like, if you will, take it or leave it, yes? You just take it or leave it, Mr. Groom. That's true. For three objects, Mr. Groom, how did you know to write this way? I didn't. He just made it up. I, he made it up for you. Said, I'm doing it this way, and that's awesome. Yeah, he went one, one, two, one. That is, if I choose none of them, there's one way to do it. If I choose one at a time, there's two ways to do it. If I choose them both, there's one way to do that. Nice. Mr. Green, for four objects. No, sorry, that's, wait, I'm sorry, wait, wait, stop, 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 stop. Stop, I'm off by one. There we go. I caught it now. Thank you. Mr. Groom is not drunk. It's too early for that. <laughs> there you go. So, three choose zero, three choose one, three choose two, three choose three. Yes, I think you all agree with that. For four, what was it? It was one, four, six, four, one. And what's the pattern? What's the pattern? Um, each number you spit, the she had pattern. the ones above it. I totally forgot about that. So, it has a name. You've, sh you've seen it. You've seen it before. It's Serpinski's Triangle. Some people do it upside down. Most people do it this way. What else? Shh. Now, uh -huh. Shh. Mr. Groom, so you're telling me this right here is five, five, choose two. Yes, right here? Five, choose two. That's right. It is. Mr. Green, what if I had 20 things? What if I had 20 objects? And I wanted to know how many ways could I select six? I'd have to go down that far. No, I am not doing it. Here, watch me play high school kid. That's too much work. I'm not even going to think about doing it. That's stupid. So what we're doing right here is what is known as a combination. A combination. We have... N things. We are taking R at a time and order doesn't matter. For me, the idea of keyword committee. That is, I just need some people to be to come with me, do something. 
There's no head of the committee or nothing. It's just I need some people. Here's another classic, okay? You're going to get in the lifeboat of the Titanic. I can't sit there. I don't like this person. Wrong. Order doesn't matter. I just want on the boat. Remember? Wah like this. Wah Problem solved. Okay? You want on the boat. Just get on. Order is not important in this situation. Okay? Now, what does the formula look like, Mr. Grimm? Well, it's NCR. And the formula goes N factorial divided by N minus R factorial times R factorial. Both of those in the denominator. <coughs> Excuse me. So a minute ago, we did 8P, what did I say, 8P, 8P6, 8P5? Yeah, right. So a minute ago, we did this. We did 8 factorial, excuse me, divided by 8 minus 5 factorial. Okay, that's what we did a few minutes ago. In a, in a permutation, Jody, Steve, Fred, Sally, Frida, is the same, I mean, sorry, shh, this is important. Frida, Sally, Fred, Steve, Jody, listen carefully. That is different if order matters, yes? But if order doesn't matter, they're exactly the same, true? So when you divide out by the five factorial, what you're saying is, I don't need all these repeats. I just need the ones that are actually truly different. So, watch carefully. On our calculators, it goes like this. It's com bin, and then 8, comma, 5. Com bin, 8, comma, 5. And what do you get? Excel? Somebody? Google Sheet? Somebody? Or on your, it works the same way on your deal, too, NCR. What's it supposed to be? 56. There are 56 combinations where, again, free to Jim, Sally, Bob, or I got rid of all the repeats. There's only one where these five people are in the same group. And then there's another 56 where they're different groups just like this. Okay? There's only one group where these five people are mentioned in the same breath. Okay? Combinations. Now, next week, we're going to spend a lot of time with combinations. Not that much with permutations, but a lot of times with combinations. We're going to reach in, if you will, into a bucket full of marbles or jelly beans or whatever. Wait. Those things all look the same to me when I just reach in and feel them, yes? A marble feels like a marble, doesn't it? It's blue, Mr. I can't feel that it's blue. And watch me pull them out, a handful of them. Those are combinations, okay? And we're going to look at problems similar to that going forward. Okay, have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Don't really worry about the homework. All right, we're going to do a little more combinations. So if you have two objects, I'm just going to say J and P. Those are our two objects. I don't know what they are. There's two people jelly and I don't know what pea sample peanut butter I guess so here's the deal I have really three things I can do these people I can walk up and say listen I want one of you okay that's the obvious one I could take J or I could take P okay if there's two items I can take one of them <laughs> okay you with me on that there's two items I can choose one of them Listen, there's two ways to do that. I could take J or I could take P. Does that make sense? Okay. There's two items. I can choose none of them. Okay. Well, how many ways can you do that? Here, watch. I don't want either one of you losers. Hey, there's one way to do that. Mm -hmm. And there's two items. I can choose two of them. And then how many ways can I do it? Well, there's one way I can do that, too. I want, listen, I want both of you. Come on, let's go. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to keep, keep track of things. We're going to have two items. I'm going to keep track of this probably down here a little bit more. Two items. If there's two items, the things I can do is I can choose none of them. There's one way to do that. I could choose one of them. Two ways to do that. Or I could choose both of them. I'm going to write that way. I'm going to write it as choose two. And there's one way I can do that. Those are the four things that can happen with two items. That's it. What if I expand that to three items? 
We'll do this on a separate page so we can like, move it around a little bit if you don't mind. So A, B, and C. The well, first thing I can do is I can take none of them. Uh, look, I don't want any of you losers. There's one way to do that. I, I don't like any of you. Go away. Okay. I could choose one at a time. I could choose A, or I could choose B, or I could choose C. It seems pretty straightforward. But there's three ways to pull that off. Now, the next one's the tricky one. I could choose two at a time. So I could choose AB, or AC, or BC. Now, pay attention to this because we're talking about combinations now. Combinations order doesn't matter. So this is the same as this. So I wouldn't list them both ways. I would only list one of them. Okay, but there's three ways that I can take two of them at a time. But wait, couldn't I also choose all three of them? That's right. I can't do that for two items because there's just two of them. But there's one way that I can do that if I have three items. Now, let's continue on. What if I had four items? <coughs> now, by the way, there are four total things that can happen on this first one. You with me? On the next one down there, six plus two is eight total items. Keep that in mind and as we go along. There's going to be some interesting number patterns that are going to show up. And you'll be like, whoa, that's cool. Yeah, I know. So let's try with four items. Uh, let's go, I guess, A, B, C, D. And again, if we were doing this in class, I'd have a time to do this. And it'd be kind of fun. And you'd have a little activity. But this is how it has to be here, I guess. Listen, I can choose uh, zero of them. There's one way to do that, obviously. I could choose A or B or C or D. There's four ways to do that. That's pretty obvious. Again, choose two is the tricky one. So A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, or B, D, or of course, C, D. So there's six ways that I can choose two of them. Okay. How about choosing three of them? Well, I could do A, B, C, obviously. I could do A, B, D. Oops. I could do A, uh, C, D, or I could do B, C, D. So it looks like there's three ways that I can pull that off. And then, of course, oops, I'm sorry, four ways to pull that off. Huh. And then I could also choose four. And there's, of course, one way to do that because I chose all of them. When you add this up, you will see that adds to 16. So we had four, we had eight. We had 16. Oh my gosh, they're multiples of two. They are. Stick with me now. Five items. Obviously, one and five. Duh. Okay, I mean, duh. Let's be honest. Wait, Jay, I feel like there's a pattern. It goes one, two, one, one, three, three, one. It, like, it, it mirrors one, four, six, four, one. So, well, wait a minute now. So, I'm going to move these over a little bit. Four, eight. I feel like when I go over to choose five, there's going to be one. That's right. And it seems like that, that choose four really ought to be five. It will be in a minute. You're right. And I feel like these two should be the same. That's right. And wait a minute. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. 16 times two is 32. If this is true, if it's true, I don't know that it's true. Right now, I currently have whopping... Um, 12. That means I have to have 20 more. These both had better be 10. Let's go see if that's true, shall we? So again, let's jump into 5, choose 2. That's going to be the trickiest one. 5, choose 2, we say. So that would be, um, let's see, A, B, C, D, E. So I get A, B, A, C, A, D, A, E, obviously. B, C, B, D, B, E, C, D, C, E, D, E. Is that all of them? There's 10 of them, baby. Kaboom. So 10, check. What about 5 choose 3? I mean, that's going to be tricky. I don't know. Well, A, B, C, A, B, D, A, B, E, A, C, D, A, C, E, A, D, E, oh, B, C, D, B, C, E, B, D, E, and C, D, E, and, hey, it's 10, what do you know? How we going? How are we doing? 10, check, 5, choose 4, I don't know, let's try it, I don't know, A, B, C, D, 
A, B, C, E, A, C, D, E, B, C, D, E, B, C, D, E, come on now, come on Jay, you can do this dummy, five, two, four, B, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, E, A, oh, Come on. Oh, A, B, C. A, B, C, E. A, B, C, E. Yes, and then B, C, D, E. Wait, no, no, no. Come on, there's a missing one here. A, B, C, D, A, B. A, B, C, E. A, B, D, E. A, B, D, E. Nice. Cool. All right. There they are. As I promised, there's five of them. Okay. So five. Yay. Look at that. What do you know? So we've got some patterns here. And you're like, wait, tell us more, Jay. Could you fill out this one without looking? Uh, maybe. Let's find out. One, six, obviously. And then over here, I'm going to have one and a six. Obviously, I'm going to choose six. And you're like, do you know what the next one will be, Jay? Ah, well, yeah, I do. I know it's 15. And 20, and 20, let's see if that's right, 30, 50, 62, 64, check, bam, would I need to know how to do that by hand? No, 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 but what I want you to see is there's always a pattern, and so there's several patterns, yeah, I don't care how many things you have, if you choose zero of them, it'll always be one, always, 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 if you have n things and you choose all of them, there's only one way to do that, five choose five is one. Four choose four is one. A million choose a million. One way to do that. What if I did N choose one? I don't know. That's a good question. Five choose one. Five. Four choose one. Four. And so on and so on. This will always be N. This one's a little trickier. So five choose four is five. Four choose three is four. And so on and so on and so on. It's always N. Okay. And the most important pattern here is the fact that N choose A is equal to n choose b if a plus b equals n which is why this works the same and why this works the same zero plus n is n so they will have the same outcomes one plus n minus one is n and they will go on to the same so what we're saying by this is this what is five choose two i don't know but it's the same as five choose three what is 17 choose 6? I don't know, but it's 17 choose 11. They have to be the same. Okay? And there's a reason for that. Because the formula for NCR is N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. Okay? So let's say I did N choose A. What I would have is N, like so. Yep. And what if I said, well, let's do n choose b as well? Oh, that's cool. Uh, so n factorial over n minus b factorial times b factorial. But you're like, wait, I feel like because a plus b equals n, then b is equal to n minus a. Are you with me? So if one were to substitute that in, what one would find is that one would get this over n minus b. Well, now, oops. Well, what is b? Well, it's n minus a. Are you with me? And then times b, which is n minus a. There you go. If you distribute the negative here, what you're going to end up with is n minus n, and then you get a plus a. So you're going to get a factorial times n minus a factorial, which is the same as this. It'll always be true. Okay. Uh, on Excel, it's equals com bin n comma r. Um, uh, for the permutations, it's equals equals permute n comma r, and for the factorial, it's equals fact uh, of whatever the number is. I'll just call it n, okay? Um, whatever number you want to do, eight, seven, two, whatever. Okay, we'll plug it in. Um, same for Google Sheets, so exact same. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is zero factorial is always one by definition. Uh, the reason for that, 
check this guy out right here, for instance. Let's say I did um, five, choose, let's do five, choose five just for fun. We know the answer. We know it has to be one. It's obvious. There's only one way to do that. Well, by definition, if you follow the, the rules, you will get this, like so. But you know this sucker has to equal one. Well, these cancel out. You get one over zero factorial is equal to one. Well, that kind of means that this right here then has to be equal one. And that's how it is done. It's by definition. Okay. Um, just want to do this little addendum to the end of the other video.